Hello, folks. Really exciting today here with Alan and Sarah. These, these folks are actually on their honeymoon over from Texas. He wants to cross off his bucket list feeding the giant tortoises, and she's trying to overcome her fear. <laughs> here, I tell you what, start off with you. How about, no, you give him that little yeah, one. Like, let him take the, <laughs> let him take the, the manly side. Here, you start with this because it's easier. See, he's further away. Look at that, that big mouth is intimidating, right? Yeah. Watch out, they don't eat your toes either. They like painted toenails. That's one of their favorites. So yeah, this is Adolf. He's 104 years old. Yeah, 104 years old. These others I've raised, they're all around 30 years old. Wow. So is this your first time next to a touching? A Galapagos, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been around? You ever seen any big aldabras? Yeah, I've seen like medium sized aldabras, probably like half the size of those, but never oh. anything that big before. Yeah, because those are the aldabras there, the galops are over here. Yeah, it's just, just. You know, you know, Sarah, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you're multitasking. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. multitasking. Wow. They are dinosaurs, yeah. you know. They're, 200 billion years, this is this body style. This body style hasn't changed. Back older than 200 million years, like 230, 230 or 270 million years ago, there were different types of tortoises. Like they didn't have a complete shell. Some didn't have a shell on the bottom. Some, the, the neck didn't pull all the way in. Some had teeth, you know? So there were a lot of different variations back about 200 billion years ago. But from 200 million years ago, that's when this body style, what we call a tortoise, you know, came into existence. So a tortoise is a completely shelled animal where all of its uh, appendages can be pulled inside the shell and closed, and the tortoise's head can go all the way back in. They have a beak, they don't have teeth. So that's, that's our definition of a tortoise. So this is unchanged for 200 million years ago. And the thing that's really exciting for me is you think about it, 66 million years ago was the mass extinction of the dinosaurs when over 70% of the dinosaurs are actually wiped out. So these guys are have, have lived through that mass extinction of the dinosaurs. It, you know, so it's, it's, really, it's really something incredible when, when you see how they change and how they're constantly changing. And they're in, they're in the, the process of, of still changing, you know? All these adaptations, you can see some different species here. See his shell, this is a Vincina. And you see how high he can pick his head up yeah. and not touch his shell? That's to give him the ability to eat things off of high, off of high brush. Wow. Now, she doesn't need it. If you take a look at her shell here, or her shell, look, as soon as she comes out, if she tries to lift her head up, she hits the back of her shell. Not that one. That one's the same as that one. I've been seen it. See how you can see all the meat in the front? Yeah. But look here on these guys. You, you, can't, you can't see in there. Yeah. So that's different species because they come from different islands, and they adapted to the best survival of that particular island. So some are wider, some are longer, some can reach their heads up higher. They have different adaptations that allow them to best exist on, their, on, on that particular island. Yeah. It's really neat too because these are actually the descendants of, of lizards. A, a lizard turned into a tortoise. It was a digging lizard. And what it did, it, to dig those holes, it wanted to create more mass. So he started, their fuse, their ribs started to um, flatten out and fuse together. And then it came uh, covered over with the skin, like made of keratin. So as they, as they became heavier, they became slower. And so their armament had to actually increase then too. So that's an adaptation that you see. In fact, they still walk like, you ever see like a Komodo dragon walk? You ever notice how they walk like this? Yeah. Well, the tortoises walk the same way because they haven't lost that feature yet. It's just that they can't wiggle their spine because their spine is fused to the shell. So a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff about those animals, you know? Are the females getting any bigger than this? Or do they no, the females the get about this. You know, they only get around 300. And the males, you know, he's only about 560 pounds. But, you know, the record for the male was... Uh, was Goliath at Life Fellowship. Goliath at Life Fellowship actually weighed about 1,180 pounds, twice this size. Right, so it has, it's a big, wide, massive animal. It has passed away since, but you know, really, really a neat animal.
Yeah, and she's 103. So this pair is 104 and 103. Yeah, because they don't want to keep dragging. It's just too much abrasion on the ground. Okay. And it would rub the skin off after a while. So they, they tuck their shells in. You see, the females don't have to tuck because they have a very short tail. And that's how you tell the difference between the sexes. The male's tail is huge compared to the female's tail. Their flat tongue is supposed to be concave, right? The males are concave so that they can mount the females better. That's what helps them hold the female because they have to try to immobilize the female. And here's the sex education part of our show. So, you know, if anybody is a little sensitive, you know, maybe you should remove your kids. But the, the, what's, what's really neat about their, their plant parenthood is that the females can actually retain sperm. When they mate with the male, they'll retain that sperm and they'll retain it for three years. So they inseminate themselves when they decide the time is right. She mates with him today, two years goes down the road. You know, he's not, he's not bringing the love. She just aborts. Like the end, no, no kids, no problem, you know. Yeah. So what's really neat is that you know she's looking for the right type of environment to lay those eggs. So she's watching things like which direction is the wind coming from, what colors are on the ground, is there water, when does it rain, and she remembers this history. So she knows the best time to lay those eggs. That in 90 days, 100 days, when those eggs hatch, they have the best chance of survival. So that's what she's in there calculating. The females are really. They're very intelligent because they have to deal with the mating of the males and the, and, and the digging of the nest. There's the science of digging the nest. The females actually, I'm going to move over to this side. Another, another, they're the whole like students. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Learning about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's up guys? The interesting thing is the females also Get a sense of what the herd is like. And do we need more males or do we need more females? What do you think? We need more males or more females, you know? But anyway, the tortoises, the female tortoises, actually will get a sense of what the population needs to change. And if they feel they need more males, what they do is they, they, they dig that nest deeper so that it's colder. And if they want more females, they dig that nest higher so it's hotter. And it's the, it's the temperature of the egg that determines the sex. So it, they help play a part in the management of the herd, which is really, really interesting. Now we got them all facing this way. I think if we go back this way, you know what? It's getting hot here, but how about a little shower? Who's our volunteer here today? Okay. So yeah, we can just give him a second. Let him turn around and we gotta get him in the right spot. Yeah. He knows what the gig is. Let's just walk this way a little bit. Ah. You gotta let him come to us. <laughs> He's already in his thing. He's like, what? Well, I'm over here. <laughs> what are you doing over there with the hose? <laughs> you, you see the look he gave us? All right, he, he wins. We're just gonna do him right here. Do, do the whole shell, all around the body, the legs, we get all that mud off. He just likes the way it feels on the shell, you know, it's really, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And when they stand up like this, this is actually called finching. And it's a symbiotic relationship they have with the finch, where the finch, the tortoise will stand up and the finch will pick the parasites out of the skin and, and therefore they get a meal and the tortoise will get rid of the parasites. So pretty neat little, uh, relationship that they have there with the birds. Okay, so we got his face here a little dirty too, so we're just going to turn this down a little bit. Yeah, let's get his face here now too. Yeah, you can see his eyes, they get all close. Just that time, you just, just don't put it in his nose. Yeah. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You gotta get your face clean. Come on. Yeah. Not shy at all. Yeah. All right. 
what'd you do here? Yeah, oh, look at the teeth. You see the teeth there? The right is that? Yeah. Mary, come over here and show the folks that like, the teeth on the side of the mouth here. It's all keratin. That's just the same thing your nails are made of or rhinoceros horns made of keratin. Right. And so they have all those little teeth. And all they do is bite and swallow, bite and swallow. I'm sure you realized that earlier. They spend a whole lot, like, yeah. a lot of time chewing, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't spend a lot of time chewing. Do they like it when they get soaked? Or... Yeah, yeah, the girls like it too. That's why they're sitting around waiting, you know. Turn the hose up a little bit now. Yeah, one of those ways. Up oh, the wrong way. There you go. Did you feel their skin? Yeah. It's like leather, right? <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting life, you know, it's so different from, you know, what I what I was doing before. I, you know, I was always a businessman, I've been employed, self-employed my entire life, and so I had, I was always in technology, I was in, I was in satellite, I was in TV, I was a TV repairman, I was an auto mechanic, you know, I did a lot of different things, I built TV transmitters, I sold them to South America, I sold them to Saudi Arabia, so... I did a lot of technical things. I had some, several large companies. And it's such a different life. Everything was so different about this life than that life, yeah. you know? That's why I used to say, I wonder how I get that guy's job, meaning my curator. And then one day I said, you know, i got to go get that guy's job. And it, it's funny, I'll tell you, it's still, it never gets old, you know? I, I come out and I see those animals and I see them every day. And every day, I, it's still special. That's the thing that's, that's kind of funny about these, these horses that live so long. I did back in the back in the nineties. I did the reptile shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about doing a reptile show next week, but I want the young guys to do it. Yeah. No, it's just him. Yeah. Mm -hmm.